President Biden has imposed a variety of sanctions before and after Russia's invasion of Ukraine. The goal is to make it economically painful for the Kremlin and those allied with it to wage war. Some of the targets, state-controlled companies, banks, the Russian defense industry, and assets held by the Russian elite with close ties to President Putin. Now some lawmakers want President Biden to impose sanctions on Putin directly. And in an emotional interview with CBS News, a member of the Ukrainian parliament begged the world to cut Russia off from SWIFT, the dominant system for global transactions. Stop Russia from SWIFT. I beg you, please save our people. Joining us now to discuss the impact of the sanctions is Ari Redboard. He is the head of legal and government affairs at TRM Labs, a cryptocurrency management company. Ari, thanks so much for joining us. Generally speaking, are you optimistic that sanctions of any kind are effective? You know, it, it, sanctions are effective. And I will just say, you know, first, thank you for having me. This is really an extraordinary moment. And um, sanctions have really become uh, or have been for some time the tip of the spear when it comes to sort of non-kinetic foreign policy, um, you know, from the U.S. and 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 our allies in Europe, um, really. And what we saw yesterday was was truly extraordinary. I think it was probably the most serious sanctions ever ever levied in in one day. And it's sort of important, I think, for level setting to just kind of talk about a little bit about what happened yesterday. Uh, you know, essentially, uh, this was an attempt uh, by the United States and Europe to cut off um, Russia's Russia from the global financial system. We saw a, uh, a, a Russia's largest financial institution, Spur Bank, um, you know, cut off from correspondent banking, which means they will have not have access, or it will not have access uh, to the U.S. dollar. We saw similar sanctions le levied on uh, the top ten other financial institutions um, in in Russia. So this is really an attempt to uh, cut off Russia entirely from the global financial system, and I think we're on our way. Um, to Iran-style sanctions, where it is really an attempt to cut off a regime from the global financial system. And um, I think we will see these sanctions grow more and more severe. You mentioned SWIFT, you mentioned sanctions directed at Putin himself. I think you are likely to see those types of things occur over the coming days and weeks. Well, can you explain, Ari, what exactly is SWIFT for people who aren't familiar with that? And you know, the fact that the president has so far held off on sanctioning Putin directly, um, others have called for him you know, to do so well before they wanted him to do that well before now. But what might those more aggressive, forceful sanctions look like if the president went forward with them? Sure. Yeah, absolutely. Very, very briefly on SWIFT, it is not the way that banks send money. It is rather the way that banks communicate with each other. And essentially what it would be doing would be cutting Russia financial institutions off from communicating uh, with other you know, banking institutions with the with the global financial system, and um, there's all kinds of um, you know implications that that come with it. In, in in terms of cutting off Putin himself, I think what we're seeing is you know I, I spent a, a couple of years in the U.S. Treasury Department uh, working with teams from OFAC and FinCEN and and uh, really across the national security space. And what I can say is that these teams have been dil diligently working for weeks or potentially months on what a response would look like. And really what, what OFAC, the, the sanctions regulator does is they create a list for policymakers, for the White House on um, you know, a menu of sanctions essentially. And um, those sanctions are, are, are rolled out in a series of tranches. I think what we've now seen is we've seen two sets of tranches rolled out, one on the Tuesday before the invasion and one just yesterday. And you can see that they continue to sort of grow in seriousness. And um, I, I think that, that probably from a strategic standpoint, there's this desire to hold some things back, probably including sanctions on Putin personally, um, until, uh, you know, to make sure that there's something in reserve here. Ari, what do you make of reports that Russia could turn to cryptocurrency to avoid economic punishment? I think for a lot of people that find cryptocurrency generally a bit confusing, how would that work if that did happen? Yeah, no, so it's, it, it's a great question. And, and look, um, U.S. sanctions are entirely predicated on the status of the U.S. dollar as the global reserve currency. Um, cutting off a bank like we saw yesterday from the global financial system, from the U.S. dollar, from correspondent banking, is the equivalent of a death sentence because so much of the world's commerce is conducted in U.S. dollars. Um, crypto potentially changes that, right? Crypto lives and moves uh, outside of the U.S. financial system. 
So the idea here is that, hey, are there ways that Russia um, and designated actors within Russia, Putin and others potentially, could use cryptocurrency to evade U.S. sanctions by moving money outside the financial system? And we do have, there are corollaries to this. There are examples of, of how this has worked. Look, North Korea you know, is really the one place in the world that for years has been truly cut off and isolated from the global financial system. Well, we, we have seen them really be an early adopter of using cryptocurrency to launder funds. And there are a number of, of cases and investigations um, involving this. We can look at Iran, right? Iran has been involved in mining Bitcoin for a number of years. And just recently, a few months ago, we saw Iran's central bank give businesses permission to, um, to transact in Bitcoin with global trade partners. That was a direct assault on the maximum pressure campaign, the, the sort of global um, sanctions campaign on Iran. So the idea is, can you use cryptocurrency to do this? And the answer is certainly yes. I will say that one thing that's really also important to point out about cryptocurrency is because of the nature of the blockchain, that open ledger where crypto lives and moves, there is more transparency on financial flows uh, than we ever have had before. There are tools like TRM Labs and others that help law enforcement, that help regulators, that help financial institutions you know, follow the flow of funds. And I think one thing that's sort of really important to mention here, you know, there's obviously a lot of focus on how law enforcement can do this, how regulators, you know, how the U.S. government can do this. Really, you know, tip of the spear when it comes to protecting our financial system are with the, you know, the compliance professionals who are within these these institutions, whether they're cryptocurrency businesses or whether they're large financial institution funds who are really sort of engaging with what are the regulations and how can we stop bad actors from taking advantage of the global financial system. It's all quite complex. Ari Redboard, thank you for breaking it down. Thank you for having me.